Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. One of the most important hours of the month is the twice a month sessions we have with Jonathan Gray. His website is before us. That's b e f o r e u s dot com. And uh, Jonathan, you're an ancient archaeologist. You're a believer. You're a scientist, and of course, you use the power of logic to slay those that think that this is not the truth in the Bible, and that archaeological proof doesn't verify. Plus, it's a important to bring things up to speed to the 21st century, so people can understand that what's in the Bible is actually true. And if people have the proper perspective, we hear, for example, from people that uh, have a limited understanding of the nature of the of the Most High God, and limit them to an earth that's only 7,000 years old. This has been brought up before. God is a, a God of a vast universe with 100 quadrillion galaxies in our known universe, and God is still the God of all of them. And we also have to realize that in our universe there is good and evil. The good are, in the Greek word, they refer to them the angelos, or the messengers. In the Old Testament they call them the, the watchers, which are watching what's going on with mankind. We have... The, uh, if you want to call it the enslavement of mankind by uh, high priests that have been passed through the ancient Sumerian, Sumerian in Egypt, through the uh, Venetians, black nobility, uh, through the globalists currently, and the pseudo-environmentalist world banksters, and they all are involved with high-level occult technologies. In fact, you can just go as far as the jet propulsion laboratories in Pasadena, all of them being Satanists, because, and the... Uh, the Society of the Black Sun in Germany, which are the highest levels of the German scientists, people don't understand that the Theosophical Society in the ancients, uh, and I re- like to refer to them as not UFOs, but IFOs, identified fiendish objects, <clears throat> that in fact what we're dealing with is something that is very knowable with logic, and that the, the uh, agnostic and atheistic points of view are immediately dispelled with through this book, the Forbidden Secret that you put together. It's one of the most important books that will tell people if they go back to their Bible, will show them what's really happening in the 21st century, and it's not all good news. So let's go through this analysis of Eric von Donick and, and his uh, research about the chariots of the gods and what's really going on. Well, uh, Dr. Bill, um, behind the scenes, most people are not aware that a cosmic drama is being played out. And it's much bigger <clears throat> than any of, a, of us ever is expected. The, the actions on this planet, as far as we're concerned, but it does involve the whole universe. Right. Now, from the earliest times, our ancestors were aware <clears throat> that a rebellion had occurred against the Creator out there, or whatever you want to call it, and that the banished rebels had hijacked this infant planet. In fact, the Mexicans, the Babylonians, the Chinese, doesn't matter where you go, uh, the Mexicans called it the war in heaven uh, and the fall of Zondi Monique and other rebellious spirits. And then they, they also remember the creation, the, the subsequent entrapment of mankind by this rebel. Uh, the, the Babylonians called it the revolt in heaven. Uh, and... Ancient civilizations universally were aware of this conflict between two major personalities and their followers. And today we see it continuing. And if we just look at America, Obama, the European community, uh, China, the Israelis, the Arabs, the Pope, they're just minor players. But all of us are caught up in it because this is a drama that's being watched with breathless interest by the whole universe. Exactly. In fact, the best uh, reality TV show in the cosmos is called Earth 24-7. Yeah. And uh, this brings us back, of course, to the Bible, which draws aside the curtain and tells us that there's not only a physical realm, but a spiritual realm or an interdimensional realm, if we want to call it that. Yeah, we talked about it last time. Which we don't uh, see with the human eye. Yeah, it's it's called hyperspace. And the best way to describe it is... When Jesus, for example, fed the the crowds of thousands with the five loaves and fishes, what he really did is he literally drew from the realm, as God said, he created the universe out of nothing. What he really did is he spoke a, uh, from the logos and kind of curved time and space and actually brought from the archetypes and hyperspace into the physical realm, and they just appeared. Uh, the best way to describe our current world would be a... Uh, five-dimensional, not four, but a five-dimensional 
uh, realm, almost like a uh, a screen for a video game would be the best way to describe it. In a sense, uh, the best way to describe the creator would be the player, who actually made the universe that we live in, and actually descended and became one of the ones playing in the game and came here to actually save us from becoming a victim so because his gospel was that we could not just be a player in the game that we could become an eternal one like the player the creator god that created this universe that we live in yes uh we've got to we might as well be realistic about this uh, most facts concerning the universe are still unknown to science and it would be presumptuous to imagine that we know as much as one octillionth of what the universe holds in store. Exactly. And our little planet is not the total answer to what's going on. Well, some of the things I talk about, uh, and I will give more this year in 2012 than I ever have in the past, but we have a lot more knowledge of the Bible than people realize. And one of the great things that you're doing is, it says in the book of Daniel, close up and seal the words of this book to the time of the end. In a sense, the revelations of the nature of the universe in terms of cycles and the Creator God, in some ways, there will be an end to lineal time this year. And when I say that, it means that we're going to have a higher revelation of who God is and what we are in 2012. That's going to open up the idea of it not only extended physical human lifespan, but also to understand the higher spiritual facts that God knows better than we do, which is why if we trust God, who's our Creator, we're going to have a peaceful world without war, without pestilence, without earth changes and, and extinction level events wiping us out. We don't need to be in constant fear. We also know we don't need to be victims of trans-dimensional entities that can enter our sleep, our dreams, and our world, and avatar our leaders, our movie uh, script writers and Hollywood directors. So it literally just destroys our cultures and corrodes our souls. There's no need for that. And, uh, you know, evil is not the opposite of good, it is the absence of it. Yes, okay. Um, what, what you're saying, I think we've got to sit up and start taking notice of these things, Dr. Bill. We, we just can't let life go on as it was. But we're not living in, in ordinary times anymore. This is an extraordinary period of history. Exactly. In fact, uh, one of the things that the globalists have talked about is the idea that first contact will transform our sciences and our religions, and this has been thought by the globalists. We need to have a Christian perspective so that we can understand the vast nature of the universe and the fact that God is the God of all of it. And he still cares for every hair in our head. He still has a place for us in eternity, and there are consequences to our bad choices and behavior that can not only destroy the physical body, but they can destroy the soul, the, literally the, the non-physical portion of what we are. Yes. Well, getting back to our ancestral memory of all nations, which harmonizes with the Bible record, I, I can vouch for that fact. I, I've gone deeply into this. They were in agreement that there was a rebellion. It occurred in the governing center of the universe, uh, and we're dealing with somebody called Lucifer. Brilliant, handsome, powerful, occupying a high position of trust, but he had a problem, and that was pride. He was looking at himself, and he respected and loved himself more than anything else. And yet that seemed not enough. It was unlimited power he wanted. Now, this fellow was charismatic in personality, he was respected, and he managed to convince a third of, we use the biblical term angels, that his way of self-centeredness was better than the Creator's way of unselfishness. And he put out stories like, the Supreme One does not care for his subjects. His laws are not in our interest. Amazing, isn't it? And he wanted to take over the heavenly domain, and so a great spiritual battle took place. You know, it's interesting how we see a lot of these played out even in uh, the miniseries uh, Star Wars with the uh, Darth Sidious and the uh, evil empire. Back in a moment with more based on the truth. Welcome back to the uh, Neutral Medical Report, opening your eyes and mind. Let's go through this analysis. And of course, Zachariah Sitchin put out this uh, science fiction based on a few disparate facts. And yes, in the Bible, there are indications that advanced uh, beings with advanced technology and culture 
transferred many of these, including weapons of warfare, agronomics, etc., to the population. But then also polluted the, not only the, the population, but it created hybrid species. The fact is, it's right in the Bible that the uh, the Nephilim uh, were basically these fallen ones that came down and actually quote, "They shall mingle them," says it says in the Bible in the book of Daniel, their seed with the seed of men. That doesn't just mean their ideas; it means the actual genetic hybridization, which created some hor- horrifying results, including King Og of Bashan and uh, Goliath, which were hybrids coming back from the return of these beings doing genetic hybridization. And many of the ancient uh, beings who are listed in and referred to by the book of Genesis and the book of Jasher are obviously clearly showing super advanced technology, more advanced than current genetic modified technologies to create hybridization of human and animal species to create some monstrosities that people think are just legends. Unfortunately, I believe it's real because we're on the cusp of that kind of technology now and these DARPA projects are going on as we speak. You know, a lot of people get the idea of a mythical devil with horns, hoofs, and a pitchfork. Well, I I, I can say we can forget that. Lucifer was a superbly beautiful and intelligent being. Right. And he was invested with power above all the other created beings. His name, Lucifer, means son of the morning, bright and shining one. The best way but to describe would be he chief was created fire. a free moral agent with the power of choice, and he became filled with ambition to be higher than his maker, and the result was spiritual mutiny. The right. book of Revelation tells us there was war in heaven. Michael, the prince of God, and his angels fought against Lucifer, and Lucifer fought and his angels. So it wasn't a war fought with spiritual, with physical weapons, but a battle for the mind, for right. the loyalty of each member. And Lucifer would subsequently become known as Satan, meaning opponent. Right. Now, the other thing that's interesting is that people don't understand that, in a sense, it's almost like you should understand that that Lucifer, the light bearer, which was his original name, was, in a sense, the chief architect of the universe, which is referred to by high-level masonry, Tagautu. He was, uh, that's why he wants to resurrect himself as the alternative to God. That's why we see the ancient uh, mystic cults of the rise of Osiris uh, and the ancient pagan religions with human sacrifice literally saying that he's co-equal with the creator God. That's why the name in the ancient world was Yah Baalan, Yahweh, the creator God, Baal, the fertility God, and Osiris, the resurrected one from the dead that rises during the Christmas ceremony of Nimbus or Lupercalia. And uh, this is all tied together. So if people think this is just mythology, they're not, it's not. It's based on reality of something that the ancient mind, which was mainly Argurian, couldn't understand, but today... In our modern world, we should start to transform these into modern concepts so that we can understand on a cosmic and galactic level that's much more malevolent, much more nasty, and much more technologically advanced than we can imagine. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I meet people, Dr. Bill, who have a problem with evil in the universe, and they say, well, if God created evil, then evil is part of God. Uh, perhaps no. I should tell a little story here, and, and one of the actors in the story is a man very well known in our time. Um, a university professor was challenging his students with the question, did God create everything that exists? And one student replied, yes, he did. And the professor answered, well, if God created everything, then God created evil, since evil existed. And according to the principle that our works define who we are, then God is evil. Well, another student raised his hand, and he said, May I ask a question, sir? And the professor said, Yes. So the student rose to his feet, and he said, Does cold exist? Well, of course cold exists, said the, the, said the professor. Uh, the young man replied, Well, sir, cold does not exist. According to the laws of physics, what we consider cold is in reality just the absence of heat. And we can only study something when it has energy or transmits energy. We cannot study cold. Absolute zero is the total absence of heat. Right. And all matter becomes inert and incapable of reaction at that temperature. So the student said cold does not exist. But we've created this word to describe how we feel if we have no heat. And the student continued, Professor, does darkness exist? Well, of course it does, said the professor. 
I'll tell you who the student was in a moment, but the student looked at him. Once again, he said, you're wrong, Professor. Darkness does not exist either. Darkness right. is, in reality, the absence of light. Right, which is why evil is the absence of good. Yeah. Yeah. So we can study light, but we can't study darkness. In fact, we can use Newton's prism to break white light into many colors and study the various wavelengths of each color, but you cannot measure darkness. Right. And finally, the young man asked the professor, Sir, does evil exist? Well, the professor was a little bit uncertain by now, and he said, Well, of course, as I've already said, we see it every day. It's in the daily example of man's inhumanity to man. We see it in crime and violence everywhere. This is nothing else but evil. Now the student spoke again, and all eyes were now on the student. The student said, evil does not exist, sir. Or at least it does not exist in itself. Evil is simply the absence of God. It's just like darkness and cold, a word that man has used to describe the absence of God. God did not create evil. Evil is not like faith or love that exists just as light and heat. Evil is the result of what happens when man does not have God's love present in his heart. It's like the cold that comes when there's no heat or the darkness that comes when there's no light. Well, the professor sat down in front of his class stunned. The young student's name was Albert Einstein. Wow. I think he made a good point there. Yeah, well, he understood, you see, and the most important experiments are philosophical and thought experiments because they change your perspective. What we try to do in this program is to change people's perspective because a lot of time you have to use remarkable books like The Forbidden Secret. You have to use humor and you have to use these metaphors so people will understand that uh, it's not a peripheral thing. If we don't understand what kind of a being we are, which is a uh, basically created in the image of the creator God that has a physical body and the lower dimensional planes, the five dimensions, including the fifth, which is the torsion field, uh, the hyperspace portion of us, which is our soul that exists in the higher seven dimensions, and that the creator God who came from the eternal now, if you want to call it, the, the, which is beyond the continuum, descended into our realm to literally show us the way, which is why the early church to the third century was called the way, and that there is only one way. There's not many different isms. There's only one way. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. What he's really saying is, if you want to dance like Fred Astaire, you have to watch Fred Astaire dance. If you want to know how to do good, you have to know how to get in contact with the higher self, uh, in contact with the Most High God by reading the Bible, by using it and sharpening your conscience, not dulling it. And uh, when we do that, we can transform the world. As Jesus said, that is a time when the kingdom is now. But we want to get away from lies, especially as we move toward issues like, as people say, first contact, which has happened a long time ago, back in a moment. deep in a discussion about Zachariah Sitchin, and of course, let's talk about this story about how Sitchin died soon after you wrote this report, etc. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Well, just just tying up that uh, what we're doing before the break, um, did God create a devil? The answer is no. Lucifer, by choosing open rebellion, by choosing to sever his connection with God, turned himself into a devil. So, uh, as I see it, evil is itself, although it's a mystery, is not another face of God. It's the absence of good, separation from God. Just like darkness is the absence of light, or cold is the absence of heat, so evil is the absence of God. Uh, the Bible has its own definitions of evil. Uh, it, just as crime is a violation of a nation's laws, sin is a violation of divine laws. Right. So Lucifer had rebelled, and people often ask me, well, well why didn't God just zap him off? Uh, it would have saved us a lot of trouble. Well, uh, let's look at this realistically. Not only had God's government been challenged, but his very character had been called into question. And his reputation for truthfulness and for concern about his subjects was at stake. 
And here was a conflict, not just involving our tiny little world, but the entire universe. The fate of all who were loyal to the Creator was at stake. And uh, I, I don't think it's hard for us to visualise that those who were loyal must have had problems. After all, an accusation made would inevitably leave a stain that could only be erased by a long and careful demonstration of our Creator's integrity, concern and wisdom. So would it be wise for him to respond with his superior power and just snuff out the opposition in one great mushroom cloud? Well, why didn't he do that? Uh, before it got worse, in the future it might have saved you and me a lot of pain, Dr. Bill. Exactly. And everyone else too. But the truth is, God is wiser than that. When the rebellion began, it seemed incredible that sin could be as dangerous as the Eternal One said it would. Now, just suppose he had destroyed Lucifer then and there. Consider now, those who were still loyal. Might they well have concluded, see what God's done? Could it be that Lucifer was right after all? God must be a tyrant. And any loyalty would have been out of fear. Now, if we're to believe the Bible, which I like to call the intelligence report, because it gets way beyond what man can ever do and, and, and reason, we've got a, a direct uh, revelation from our own Creator speaking to us. And it tells us that he decided to fight the rebellion with love. Lucifer's character must be unmasked. And this mysterious virus of sin must be allowed to show its results to all. The Creator would place himself on trial, as it were, before his subjects and let them see just who it really is who cares. And naturally, the Creator would want us to regard him with love, not fear. So it's no wonder that he had to give this sin virus a chance to develop, to show to everyone the true effect of the spirit of evil. Its character would have to be understood for the future security of all. And so it would seem the Creator was demonstrating a hands-off approach to allow Lucifer opportunity to prove his claim that he could set up a better government than God so that when he finally does destroy the rebel and his gang, no one will have any doubts about who it is that loves us and who it is that is just. So Lucifer was not blotted out of existence. He and his sympathizers were banished from their original domain and bitter, simmering for revenge, they came down and hijacked planet Earth. And here they were going to make their battlefield, get man on their side, and ultimately win back their aim of taking the universe. Now the Bible tells us this is what was happening, and not only is it in the Bible, it's recorded in the traditions of many ancient races, as having been revealed to mankind by God himself. So we've got the scene shifting here to planet Earth. And um, in the beginning, it was created perfect. Uh, it doesn't matter where you go, whether you go to the Bible or you go to the Mahabharata, the epic Indian poem containing the history of the world about the first age, or whether you go to the Greeks, considering the golden age that we started with, or whether you go to the Chinese, who say the first age was one of perfect harmony, or the Native Americans who say that the age of the first people, everything was peaceful and happy, uh, or the ancient Sumerian writings which speak of a time when there was no wildness, no harm, no rivalry, but plenty, security and peace everywhere. It seems a common racial memory of a once perfect world, of an age that did not know suffering in the beginning. Now that's interesting, isn't it? The whole of our ancestry remembers that. It is, it is remarkable that that's burned into the historical memory of virtually every culture, but it's been perverted on purpose by the, the elite of the false religions, the false spirituality, and again, by various different forms of what we call Masonism, whether it's Buddhist Masonism, uh, Shinto Masonism, Masonism of, the, uh, of these so-called shamans in different cultures around the world, and basically it's different versions of the same evil. It's tried to, to put Satan, the opposer, in a position of being obstinate and a triune component of the completeness of God when it really isn't. He's just a usurper. Exactly, yeah. And so we have, uh, this is a very different beginning 
from what we've been told in school, that the sordid and wasteful mechanism of evolution embodying tooth and claw and painful upward struggle was used to produce mankind. Of course, uh, there are some who may say that God used evolution to produce mankind, but if God did that, then he was a cruel creator. You can't call him a God of love. Uh, and uh, in any case, the racial memory of mankind and the Bible are in agreement about the fact that all was perfect in the beginning. So uh, it, we shouldn't ignore this. It's our own history. It's our family history, history of all of us. Yeah, basic, isn't it? Yeah. But it changed when Lucifer's mob dropped in. Bitter and simmering for revenge, they took this as their new homeland. It was singing with life. It would become his battlefield, and here he had set up his kingdom according to his rule. And so the, the main stage of the war now focused on Earth. But the target of Lucifer's rage was still the one who threw him out, the Prince of God. And if we go back to the old records, we see that in this beautiful world, our first parents had everything perfectly fashioned for their needs and enjoyment. But Lucifer was determined to wreck this. And he soon planted in their minds his own attitude of get, go it alone, you don't need God, be independent, follow my directions and you'll be as good as God. And foolishly, our parents joined the rebellion. And that was the beginning of the tr our troubles here on planet Earth. Okay, now uh, I, I'm, I've been asked in recent times, what, and the question does come up everywhere, I guess, from time to time, why not make evil to be impossible? I mean, if the Creator's all-powerful, is He uncaring? Or if He's benevolent, is He powerless to help? Why didn't He make it impossible for mankind to fall? Well... When he created that tree, they were forbidden to touch. Didn't he create a temptation that was the cause of the ultimate curse? Well, the fact is that God did surround our parents with evidences of his love. He warned them concerning Lucifer, and then he drew what we might call a line in the sand. He gave them an instruction by which they could confirm their allegiance. And in the face of Lucifer's slander, it was reasonable to require from our first parents not just a promise of loyalty, but a demonstration of loyalty. And for this to occur, they had to be faced with a definite test. There's nothing wrong with tests. When we measure up, tests can make us stronger. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, now think. Just suppose you and I... Uh, just suppose you had a 14-year-old daughter. Would you let her ski? Sure. You'd tell her to be careful, but you'd give her some good advice, and then you'd tell her to go off and ski. Would you run behind her and molly coddle her? What if she fell and skinned her face? Well, she'd learn to be more careful. So although you have the power to intervene, even though you have power to prevent her pain, you would show your respect for her by letting her make a mistake, learn from her. Doesn't that make sense? And yeah, we're back, and uh, remarkable stories. That one with uh, Albert Einstein was quite amazing. Uh, please continue about these uh, writings, and we may even have a chance in this segment to get on to the bit of the next chapter. Yeah. Well, um, I, I was just um, going to mention the fact that we have free will, and that free will is granted to us because God loves us, and he wants us to enjoy optimum happiness. Well, we couldn't become uh, like only him one who can choose to love that has optimum happy happiness. If you're forced to do something, uh, you just don't have that. Uh, and spiritual laws and physical laws both operate in our world. Uh, we, we live them, we obey them, we're happy, we're safe. We disregard them, we abuse them, we violate them, we suffer, whether they be physical laws or spiritual laws. And so, uh, uh, as I was saying off air, Dr. Bill, the basic reason for our suffering in this world is our abuse of these laws, We've exercised our free choice to cut ourselves off from our maker, and that's our responsibility, not God's. We also uh, can't become like him unless we have free choice. In other words, he could not ha take a bride. He could not have children, which is what God's doing. He couldn't create eternal ones unless his spirit and our soul fuse as one because we want to be like him, which means we have to choose freely to accept the Father. 
And yeah. uh, that's what makes us very different. We're not just a mortal being. We are a potentially immortal being. Our soul, and this is something that is, there's a lot of mistruths that are taught by a lot of people that don't discern the keys that are in the Bible because it interprets itself as it says in Second Peter 2.10, uh, that one of the great truths is that that the soul, the ultimate place of the soul that is not saved is annihilation. Now, yes, it may take forever, but annihilation is where it's going. The soul is not going to be just, quote, eternally tormented. It's going to be isolated from the Creator God and all other creation. You don't burn in hell with a million or a billion other individuals. You burn in the lake of fire alone. And uh, people don't understand that the, the place of the unrepentant and the unsaved is lonely desolation and destruction. You know, um, this is much more important than just about anything else we could discuss, I think. Right. Really. Uh, every person's destiny, every one of us, the future of every one of us is at stake in what we're talking about today. Isn't that right? Exactly. In fact, one of the things that happened as an experience was I was driving back after dropping a patient off many years ago at a psychiatric hospital who put a shotgun in his mouth and was going to blow his brains out. And, of course, uh, praying and going there, I thought, well, maybe he'll kill me, but... I was going to pick him up anyway. I brought him all the way to the psychiatric hospital, which is a good 30-some miles away. And on the way back, I had one of these visions where literally God took over the vehicle, and I was shown a vision of the countless numbers who would go to the place of darkness and destruction if I wasn't obedient. And that's the responsibility that we have that are believers. It says, who can know the truth if someone doesn't give them the gospel, the good news? The good news is that God cares for us. He does give us a way in in this world of veil of tears because if you look at the uh, the crown of the Vatican which is a satanic organization the three crown levels are one for the lower realm which is the realm of hell for the people that are satanists that take the uh, the Yale skull and bones oath to the goddess Nu which is the god of, the goddess of destruction just like Shiva in, in the Hindu religion they believe that they're literally in hell already in the lake of fire they believe that their works that exist after they're physically and spiritually dead are all that remain. That's why they're willing to do evil, because they just want to do whatever they can to pass it on, because it's only the architecture and the things that they leave to the others that remain. They they know they're going to be annihilated. That's what's so bizarre about this. Yeah, absolutely astonishing. It is astonishing, and it, what's amazing is we're being ruled by people like John Kerry and George Bush, and many others who are high-level Masons, like George, like uh, Barack Obama and many others that actually have taken these satanic rites and understand that their God is not the God of of creation, but the God of Yabalon, Yahweh, Baal, and Osiris. They are worshipping the dark side, Lucifer. They have become Darth Vader, in a sense, uh, addicts, and they've, they've, you know, they've taken the poison... The poison of the garden wasn't to take a piece of fruit. It was to choose good and evil for yourself. It wasn't to pray and listen to the voice of the Most High God. That's the fruit of the garden that they took. So becoming Darth Vader means you take from that fruit of the tree that you can decide better than the Creator what is good or evil. Because as you said before, what Einstein said, evil is the absence of God. Yeah. And they know that. They know that. They actually are, that's why they rule by dialectics of chaos. That's why they rule by complaining confusion and ignorance. That's why they treat us as if we're the profane ones. And that's why they use sacred geometry and other technologies to rule over us because they literally set us up to be spiritual sacrifices to their trans-dimensional hyperspace demonic gods and demigods that are basically trying to usurp the power of the Most High and, and their days are numbered. And the fact is that this is a galactic and a cosmic event that's about to happen. And this year, not a future year, this year, part of that transformation is going to start happening. And mankind will start to change its perspective because we're on the verge of an extinction-level event and Lucifer is in the stands waiting to clap and cheer as we destroy ourselves. Well, he hates the human race. He'd like to destroy every single one of us if he, if he had the chance. Absolutely. Because for the power and the protection of God, uh, none of us would be surviving now. We're God's children. We're like in a giant womb, and uh, the womb of the earth is like the uh, blue jewel that God created, a womb for the spiritual souls. People think they're adults and they're humans, but in fact they're still in the spiritual uterus of earth, and they haven't yet understood 
that the great abortionist, the galactic abortionist, has arrived with a suction curatage and his mask is on and you can hear his machines clanging and vibrating as they're ready to cut us in pieces and suck us into the lake of fire. That's what his intentions are. And it's put through minions like global, globalists like George Soros and uh, Henry Morgenthaler, head of the National Abortion Federation many years ago that I battled with. And it's had people like Barack Obama who is, uh, as I say, it's hard to determine if he was bored because the only evidence we can see is that he was spawned. Spawned by the powers of darkness because his family were spooks for a year. And people like Hillary Clinton, they're the product of what are called satanic technology to curse their bloodline was more powerful than mass murder. And that's what they've done to create Hillary Clinton, who's being avatared by a transdimensional entity. So we need to pray for these leaders who are literally become victims to parasites in the spiritual realm of their physical and their mental lives. They're no longer human, they're just basically a husk to make it look like, as it says in the book of Daniel, clay and iron, they will show, they'll mingle themselves with the seed of men. What it is, is a spiritual technology to create these pseudo-humans that are in fact are soulless. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah, and and these people we see and hear about in the news, they're the, not the ones making the decisions. They're being brain-fed as to what they have to do and say. Oh, absolutely, and it's not just on a, a spiritual level. It's on a physical level. It's on a first contact level. It's on a technological level. It's on so many levels. People just, if they knew the reality of it, which I can't talk about yet, it's so much more bizarre that our lettered agencies and these high-level governments and corporations and satanic false religions are completely involved with the satanic regime as Jesus was told uh, that taken high above the temple that Satan said I own all of these kingdoms of the earth and of course he wasn't telling a lie at that time in fact people don't understand this the devil can deceive but he can't tell a lie and there's a big difference isn't there well he controlled the planets all, of, all the, uh, uh, the nations on earth and, and he could rightly say that he had them under his power he still does. He still does. Right. If gone. anything, even more strongly, a, a firmer grip than he's ever had. That's right. That's, but, but it is the time of the end for the dragon. The dragon and his fallen ones are about to be evicted. Their lease is up. What an exciting time to be alive, to see the, the culmination of all this. Uh, maybe you and I will, and our listeners will mostly be alive when this happens. Well, I know I'll be alive because this is the time of the end. As it says, close up and seal the words of the book to the time of the end. And you can see the signs in the Bible. That's why it's one of the things that people don't understand. The revelation of the book of Revelation, which is a revelation of John by Jesus over 29 years on the day of the Lord, was, <coughs> in fact, when those signs start to open up, you don't get told that it's a day or an hour because the high priest was put in a tower, which means he revered that the words of God were true. So we knew they would happen, and we can see the culminating, probably very soon, war in the Middle East. And we can see the rise of a cybernetic, biometric world. We can see the rise of evil that calls itself good, like Barack Obama that says, like we talked about in the first hour, that wants to put sex education and birth control, but it increases abortions. And the fact is that the powers of darkness, just like the ancient world, are now reached the high point where the destruction by fire is coming quickly upon our planet and there is a way and that way is through the Holy One of Israel yeah amazing this book is so important The Forbidden Secret by Jonathan Gray line it up and read it with your Bible beforeus.com we'll be back again in two weeks tomorrow Harley Schlanger Bob Chapman Ted Anderson you don't want to miss it take care and take action 